you guys. Welcome to the sub show. I am getting ready for this special interview with my special guest all the way from Sydney, Australia. Let me tell you guys, I want to go to Australia, but it is a huge time difference and gap. Like, we were trying to schedule everything, and um, they're like almost a day ahead of us, but not a day ahead of us. So at some point throughout our day, we match up with their day, but then they're going to bed. So I'm so happy to have my special guest on today because it's early in the morning for him, and he's joining us at 7 a.m. our American time. So let me introduce you to my special guest. Let me make sure y'all know I'm not good with names, but he helped me. He helped me out now. This is Low Cash, Low Cash, Babu. Yes, you got it 100% right. <laughs> That's what I was talking <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Welcome to the sub show. How are you feeling today? Well, I feel great. So I'm glad that um, I'm doing this first thing in the morning for me on a Friday. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good, uh, feeling great, and looking forward to having a bit of a chat with you. Uh, I'm so honored to have you on, especially um, with what your book is talking about. It's definitely within the season that I am in right now and um, with my show, helping my audience to understand that we're going to go through things in life. But if we keep pushing through, we'll see that there was a lesson and blessings on the other side. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and um, get this kicked off. Introduce us to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I was born in South India, um, and probably I would say I didn't really uh, grow up in India um, because uh, early, before year 2000, I migrated to Australia, and for last 22 years, I've been pretty much living overseas, and I've traveled a little bit and understood a little bit uh, different cultures and faith. So currently, I'm here in Sydney, and just last year in December, uh, I published a book, and yeah, so pretty much that's who I am, and yeah, I'm still learning. I'm still, uh, you know, trying to find different ways to lead a better life. I love it. I love it. And I um, I like what you ended it with. You're, you're still looking for better ways to um, lead and live a better life. So many people think that, you know, things are over when it's not. And here you are traveling the world. And like you said, you just put the book out in December. What made you want to write that book? So uh, I never thought of writing a book. Uh, but back in 2015, um, I was really starting to take some notes just to understand um, about life. So the title back then I had was Book of Wisdom, Understanding Life, Meaning of Life. And um, yeah, after a while, back in 2019, a couple of released this book. And I said, what book? I'm like, yeah, you know, you always carry this and you're always writing, scribbling something in the book. And then I was like, oh, oh, yes, I do have a book now. So that's how it really started. But actually, uh, this, this pretty much was my own notes, my own understanding. And 2019, I really started working on a, mo a manuscript. And that really became a book uh, after, let's say, in 2021, 20. So end of 2021. So you can say it's a six-year journey, uh, but it was never my intent to actually write and publish a book. But the universe decided that it has to be written and published to the public. So here we are. You know, um, that's how I know you're perfect for the show because most people just took that leap of faith without, it, it was something that just happened. Like you said, over time you began researching and writing and just scribbling things, and before you knew it, it was a book. And your friends told you that, and I'm pretty sure you may have been nervous or you may have like, I'm an author now? And then you took that leap of faith and put the book out, 
and is out to help people, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, your book is called True Self. Where did you the, – the True Self. Where did you yes. get that book title name from? Well, initially I started uh, a little bit, you know, thinking, all right, what, what should be the title? And then as I started to look into the book and look into the chapters, once I started to really uh, trying to finish uh, the manuscript, I realized this book is all about uh, self-awareness, uh, inner self, and how do you differentiate between you know, the ego self, the false self. And that's where I realized, you know what, this journey of this book is more about understanding the true self because for me, my own personal experience, I understood there is a difference between true self and then the other self, which is ego self, false self, and all those things. And also in our English language, the meaning of true self is a lot different to what the um, spiritual side of things really talk about true self. So that's the reason um, at the end, um, initially I thought, you know, maybe I should go with the title, The Inner Self. And then I'm like, nah, still it's a little bit confusing. Um, so let me go with The True Self. So that's how the name really came about. biggest challenge we have understanding true self is because since we were kids, our community, our society, our parents, the geography, culture, faith, it all conditioned us to go into duality. When I say duality, we were asked to pick our likes and dislikes, good and bad, which leads to limitation. So the way we conditioned since we were kids, the education as well. So suddenly by the time we are adults, it's pretty hard to go back and undo all the things we learned, undo all the experiences we had. So we straight away have a hero, a villain, good, bad, uh, you know, one religion better than another religion, all these things. So it just creates, that's why it's pretty hard for people to find true self because whatever you learned since you were a kid, pretty much the true self is saying, hey, you need to just literally drop it all and start all over again. So that's why it's pretty challenging for people to really... Um, of an individual is the biggest challenge, finding the true self. So when I say limited identity, we identify everything with our mind and body. But there is something else bigger than mind and body. That's the true self. That's the spirit. That's what I think, you know, when it's a leap of faith, that's spirit. So that's limitless. That's boundaryless. So that's why it's hard for people to understand the true self. And also, let's say, if you want to go and read books, the spiritual books are too read a lot of these, you know, spiritual books. And it's, it's not simplified, uh, you know, whatever I could do to explain the true self. Hopefully, I, I answered your question. <laughs> so, do you, would you agree or not agree that some people actually die with ne without ever finding their true self. The population will never find their true self. <laughs> you said 99.9? <laughs> yes, yes. 
I would I would I would have gave maybe seventy five, but you know, yeah, that would that would be a that would be about right. Do you think that a lot of people just don't they they think they found themselves when they haven't, and that's why they don't search? Yes, yes, yes. Maybe you're right, seventy five percent. But the other twenty five percent are the ones they thought they found the true self, but that's still the ego self. It's not the true self. So, if someone were were to ask you, where do I begin to start finding my true self, what would your response be? I would start with identity. I would start with um, what's my identity. When I say I, what does that mean? So, I would start with that question. And then what it leads is when I ask myself, who am I, normally what happens, okay, I have a name, um, I'm from certain race, certain culture, certain faith, all those things. And then when you look into that, it's still limited. I'm limiting to one race, I'm limiting to one country, I'm limiting to one geography, I'm limiting myself to one faith, all those things. So that's when you realize, ah, but it's, you know, it's still a limitation step is actually there is three things here. So there is your true self, and then there is your mind, and then there is your body. So only when you extend yourself, your thought process, beyond your mind and body, that's when you start to see that there is something bigger. So mind and body is kind of like a tiny drop of water in the ocean. The ocean itself is the true self. Mm. So individuals who understand that there is a gap between true self, mind, and body, that's when you're really on a you know, beautiful journey. So I'll give you a simple example, which everyone can relate to. So after a hard day's work, you know, we are tired, and then we, you know, we go to sleep. So we close our eyes, and we have six hours, seven hours, eight hours sleep. What happens in that sleep? Let's say that sleep is no dream sleep. So it means there's no thought. There's no loud ones. You're not thinking about work. You're not thinking about bills. You're not thinking about all the problems you think during the daytime. So that sleep time, the beautiful sleep time, is nothing but your true self. Your true self doesn't care about all the things, the worries. And then in the morning, you open your eyes, that's when again everything comes back. Oh, I need to think about my kids, I need to think about my job, my bills, and all the things come up. So what's happening there is when you open your eyes, the thought comes back, the mind says, okay, there you go, this is what you need to do. So again, you can see the tiny difference in our day and night, what we go through. But if we really start to inquire a little bit deeper, we can actually achieve that when we are awake as well. That's the best way I can actually give as an analogy for everyone to understand. So the deep sleep doesn't have thoughts. The deep sleep doesn't bring all the problems and all the things we think during the daytime or in, you know, when we are awake. So achieving that even at the daytime is like you are understanding the true self. Mm-hmm. And is this also, do you um, elaborate more and go deeper into this within your book? Techniques so, and ways. Absolutely, absolutely. So what I have explained in my book is I have given my own personal life experiences. So when I was a kid, um, in my teenage years, um, I have attempted self-harm. I have attempted suicide. And uh, I felt like I was a lost case. Uh, I felt like the society didn't care about me. And I've seen a lot of inequality, and I faced inequality. Uh, And then after that, um, you know, I lost my mother um, when she was pretty uh, young. I think, you know, she was 49 or 50 uh, for cancer. And then after that, uh, I had my own uh, illness where almost I had a near-death 
um, you know, illness just back in 2018. Um, and recently I lost my father as well during COVID time. So I gave all these examples of my own personal life, and then I used the uh, knowledge, the knowledge across the world, Asian, American, European, um, you know, Indian, everything. And that's how I gave the analogies. I took my own life experience and I said how I got out of it without getting burnt, without getting uh, depressed, without getting, um, you know, into this mindset of, oh, you know, I have nothing else in life to look forward to. So that's, that's what this book is about. Because we all will go through this at and, some point in our life. Yeah. Um, well, you, you went into one of my other questions with your answer when you spoke about your parents. And I was going to say, do you think that the trials of life and the things that you have been through and experienced helped you with, try, uh, with finding your true self? Absolutely. Um, when my mother passed away back in 2004, it wasn't easy. Um, I was also a bit young, and um, I carried some sort of a guilt um, for almost 10 years. And mm. then I asked myself, what is this? You know, you know, everyone's scared about death. And we, but yet we all know death is inevitable. So what I learned is uh, in this seeking, pain and death is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. So then I, you know, when my father passed away only 12 months ago, I, di- I didn't have pain. I didn't had, um, sorry, I, I didn't had suffering because I understood this is the cycle of life and I need to be there mm. and I need to, uh, you know, take the moment, take day by day and do what I need to do rather than suffering. So, yes, absolutely. To answer your question, uh, comparing my mother's death to my father's death, uh, there's been a enormous self-transformation. So mother's death was painful. Uh, you know, there was guilt. There were so many things played in my head for almost a decade. But my father's death, there is some sort of celebration that, um, you know, I still feel like, you know, I have seen that and experienced that in a positive way. I know it sounds a little bit, oh, God, how can that be positive? But that's, that's where the true self um, becomes a different experience. Yes, that 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 is definitely correct. Um. Blackbirds singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You're only waiting for this moment to arrive. Blackbirds singing in the dead of the night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see All your life You are only waiting for this moment to be free Blackbird fly Blackbird fly Into the light of the dark black and I lost my dad at a young age. I'm sorry about your mom also. Um, but I have also learned that death is the promise to life. So I get what you're saying. And, you know, it may hurt. But that's, a guar- that's one guarantee that everyone um, have when they get life. When you're birth, you have death. And, you, and that's just the one promise you can guarantee yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons I feel like personally uh, you have experienced your own, um, you know, ups and downs, but you started to see things differently. That's why you're rising above rather than sinking into, uh, you know, under the water. 
Well, I can talk to you all yeah. day. I almost feel like the um, chakra-like chiming uh, bell should go off at some point um, <laughs> with your voice and, you know, this discussion and, you know, this was great, you know. Um, I heard a lot of things, you know, that were that was for me and I always say this show blesses me in so many ways because the people that come on and the things that they talk about and go through and survive and then have enough strength to actually want to help others and um or you see someone and you think one thing until you hear the backstory and you're like, What? They've been through that or they had problems, and actually it takes the problems to teach you how to make it through. So I thank you for um, joining us here on the Stub Show. Let my audience know how can they connect with you and where can they purchase the book. Uh, The book is pretty much available on uh, Amazon. All audience need to do is just type the true self by Lokesh. That's it. And there is a lot of reviews in Goodreads and also Amazon. And uh, it's pretty much uh, simple these days with all this technology and stuff. And let's say if anyone wants to connect with me, um, I am on uh, social media platforms like LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. So they can find me anywhere. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty easy and simple uh, to get the book and also to reach to me if uh, you know anyone wants to. Yes, you guys, make sure you check them out. Lokesh Babu, Bab, Babu. Make sure I get that right. But B A B U. Make sure you look it up. His first name is spelled L O K E S H. The book is called The True Self. Like you said, it's on Amazon. He's also on um, Instagram at Lokesh Babu Official. And you can also look on our Instagram page at the underscore subs underscore show, where we will also be listing his information and on Facebook at the sub show. We thank him once again. We have had a great interview. I hope you guys learned something. Make sure you purchase your book today. Go on Amazon. Thank you for joining us. Um, Leave us with um, a good word, something about faith. There's one truth, many paths, and that many paths are nothing but the faith. The faith is our spirit. Our spirit is unlimited, boundless, means we're all more connected than we ever imagine or think. Thank you. This is a sub show, you guys.